Uh, all right, so now I have to uh, shout out a friend of mine who came up with an ingenious solution to a problem. So over here, you can see an example of hosting a QR code on a Wi-Fi nugget or really any small display. So let's say that I want somebody to be able to set something up very quickly. Well, if I don't want them typing in some long URL that they might end up messing up, I can give them a QR code, which their phone will scan and automatically take them to the configuration page that allows them to set up whatever thing it is I'm trying to set up. So in this example, I'm trying to make a Wi-Fi honeypot, something that will connect to your Wi-Fi network and then sit there and able to, in order to detect when someone starts scanning around your network and accessing things, thinking that they might be something juicy to log into. So this is, you know, maybe like a roommate who uh, has gotten on the network and is poking around, or a neighbor that's gotten access to your Wi-Fi by brute forcing your password or something and starts trying to log into stuff. This would be kind of a, a first detection method. But the problem is we were using Canary tokens, which is a really easy and free way to quickly get set up with a detection mechanism. But the URL was just too long to fit into this tiny little QR code. And the way the QR codes work, the next version up can't effectively be scaled on this tiny screen, meaning that we couldn't actually let users use a QR code to go over to the configuration page and see whether or not you know, someone has broken into their network or what's going on with it. So that was pretty disappointing until a friend of mine uh, Arsenis came up with an amazing idea. So he decided that it would be a good idea to actually create a shortening service on the this device itself. So just the same way that like Bitly or something will take a longer URL and shorten it, this does the same thing on the Wi-Fi Nugget. So on the little ESP32 S2 based microcontroller, it's able <clears throat> to host its own URL shortening service. So Arsenis went ahead and wrote this ingenious Python code, um, which allows you to take a token, and I've obfuscated this, this is not the real token, but allows you to take a token that's way too long to effectively be fit, and instead pop up this short little URL and then turn it into a QR code. So what it looks like is you connect to the same Wi-Fi network, you scan the QR code, and it will automatically forward you on to this much longer link that isn't able to actually fit on uh, the QR code. So I just thought that was so ingenious. The fact that you can actually forward someone to any length of URL, even if it won't fit in a QR code by hosting a little server on this microcontroller, which will do the work for you. So originally we thought like, oh, we're gonna have to buy AWS space and we're gonna have to pop this thing up as an external server. No, you can actually run this on a little microcontroller. So of course this has applications for like phishing users and doing other sorts of things as well, sure. But it means you can also effectively as a creator guide users in like installation processes or to documentation with a tiny little QR code instead of a really big one, which might be required to hold more data. So shout out to Arsenas for making an incredible workaround for this technical problem that allows easier setup for users doing microcontroller stuff. Cool. Just to circle back around to your QR thing, since I know you were pretty interested in that Crazy for, a while. for QRs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're QR crazed. Yeah. So I don't know if you saw um, that these have been circulate, circling around um, Twitter now, these animated GIFs of QR codes that are actually scannable, but I thought these mm. were pretty interesting. I didn't get to read too much into um, the technical documents on them. But from what I understand, the premise is that certain parts of QR codes can be obstructed and still operate since um, there's different sectors of a QR code that actually encode the information and lots of the QR code compensates for um, error, whether that's the QR code being physically obstructed or if it's like misscanned or like blurry or something like that. Um, but there, someone made an algorithm that basically allows you to just dump a GIF into a QR code and have it still redirect to a link by detecting like which of these sectors can be manipulated. Also, I don't know if that GIF is actually buffering on our screen over there. It, but it, yeah, it's, 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 it's oh yeah, a little bit. It's yeah. moving a little bit. Yeah, but I thought this was really interesting and maybe you might want to look into this, but you can also check out this website, which I thought was pretty cool, uh, cool qrpicture.com. But this allows you to create animated QR codes. That's based super cool. This premise. Yeah. yeah, so the, so, in most standards of QR code, depending on the level of error correction that is set, um, you can have as much as 30% of the QR code be destroyed and have it still be perfectly functional. So that allows you to do things like little animations or just literally have something stuck in the middle, like a brand name. Oh, yeah. uh, and, or, I mean, as it was designed, if you put this on the outside of a box or something and it gets scraped and damaged in transit or bleached out or whatever, then it's, unless the entire thing is really destroyed, 
um, 30 percent can be just ruined and it could still work. And you can test that by just holding your finger over parts of a QR code and you can cover up like a third of it and it still just seems to work. So that's why these are these are pretty cool. Um, I guess a little less than a third. But yeah, uh, they're yeah. so pretty cool and enable you to do things like these animations where, oh yeah, yeah. You can also see you can a damaged QR code. Just, oh, is, yeah. this the, is this this comparison where they like try to destroy QR codes in different ways and see if it works or not? Um, they briefly talk about that. They okay, just cool. show like pasting images over it. You can see this one that's just like ripped in half. And then also this one that just has a GIF pasted over it. Yeah, there's an this there's this amazing um like kind of study on QR codes where this person just tries to destroy it in different ways and records whether or not it actually knocks it out. And there's a couple of things that will knock out a QR code. My favorite is if you remove the separation in those squares. So for example, if you join um the square, like hmm, moving the mouse right there, if you join <laughs> that part of the square against like a black background so it can't distinguish it totally impossible to read the QR code because it can't get those black squares, so it doesn't know where any of the code is. Um, so Yeah, that's for like orienting it, right? Exactly. I understand there's different parts, like these three squares in the corners are for orienting it. There's like data blocks that tell it what kind of QR code it is, and then the data itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there's a, a couple blocks below the squares where if you were to color those in with a pen, um, it would destroy the the information it uses to identify what type of QR code it is. And at that point, it can't read it any further because it doesn't know what the data is or it isn't sure. So yeah, I my uh, interest was in kind of trying to damage QR codes to the point you could either flip them to another QR code or to just destroy them in the most expedient way possible because they are really resistant actually to destruction. And that's why it's possible to do these sorts of animations on them. Yeah. All right, so that's all the time we have for today. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat asking questions and commenting on the stories. And if you have any questions about anything that we covered or if you're watching on repeat, you can always leave a comment and we will make sure to answer it on our live Q&A streams, which we do every Wednesday now. So on our last Q&A stream, we had Darren Kitchen on as well um, as Mike, who does uh, Kismet, as well as some of the new improvements on um, the Wi-Fi pineapple, pineapple that we got to discuss. Yeah. And that was super cool. So you can check out our live stream on Wednesday if you want to uh, see us on Hack 5, maybe have a special guest on and ask questions and get them answered in real time. So big shout out, of course, to Veronis for letting us to continue to do this stream, which is really fun. And also shout out to everybody in the chat for uh, just being here with us and getting to check in with us at the end of the week. Lots of fun to talk to all of you. And uh, yeah, Alex, thanks for uh, being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you all next week. Have a good one.